This is the Pythagorean Theorem tutorial. The Pythagorean Theorem is stated as a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, and it helps you solve for any missing side of a right triangle. So let's take this right triangle that we've drawn in, triangle XYZ. The a, the b, and the c respectively stand for the legs and hypotenuse of a right-hand triangle. So for example, we could say that this leg, leg xy, has a value of a. This leg on the bottom, xz, has a value of b. And the hypotenuse of this triangle has a value of c. It's not important which leg is a and which leg is b but it is important that the hypotenuse is labeled as C when using the Pythagorean theorem. So let me show you how this would work on a practice problem. Let's say that you were given two legs of a right triangle and you didn't know the length of the hypotenuse. So let's say that this side is four and segment XZ is six, but we don't know the hypotenuse and we want to solve for it. It's variable C. Well, we can plug in the two legs. We can substitute them for a and b. So I'll make 4a and I'll make 6rb. We can substitute those values in to solve for c, which I'll do over here on the right. So according to the Pythagorean theorem, if we take a and square it, and we know a to be 4, and we add that to the square of b, and b is 6, that will be equal to whatever the hypotenuse is, c, squared. Well, 4 squared is 16, and 6 squared is 36, and that's still equal to c squared. So, we can add 16 and 36 and get 52, and set that equal to c squared. Now, to solve for c, We'll take the square root of both sides, and that will cancel out the square on C. So you'll get the root of 52 is equal to C. Now we can continue to simplify the root of 52. It's not in its most simplified form. So I'll just use prime factorization real quick to break it down. 2 times 26 is 52, and 2 and 13 go into 26. Now because I have a pair of 2's, I can bring 1, 2 out, and we have only 1, 13, which means it's going to stay behind under the radical. And that will be equal to C. So if you were given a right triangle with one side being 4 and the other side being 6, you could use the Pythagorean theorem and solve to find out that the hypotenuse has a length of 2 root 13. Now 2 root 13 is an irrational number, and oftentimes when you're using the Pythagorean theorem, you're going to find that one leg of a triangle has an irrational value. However, when dealing with right triangles, there are some that come out to all perfect integers, and I'll show you some of those. We call them Pythagorean triples. Two of the most common Pythagorean triples you'll see are a 3, 4, 5, and a 5, 12, 13. So how that would typically work is the first two numbers of a Pythagorean triple stand for the values of the legs of that right triangle. So in this case I would say two legs are 3 and 4. I'll make this leg 3 and this leg 4. If this leg were 3 and that leg xz were 4 on a right triangle, the hypotenuse would be 5. Whenever you're using the right triangle Pythagorean triple, the first two numbers, like we said, are going to be your legs, 3 and 4, and the last number is going to be your hypotenuse. So what do you think triangle TUV is going to look like if we're going to use 5, 12, 13 for its Pythagorean triple? Well, one side would be 5, either one you want, the other leg would be 12, and the hypotenuse would be 13. And if you want to use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, 
To check these numbers, I encourage you to do so. You'll find out that they come out to be exactly this. Go ahead and just plug in two of the numbers, let's say 5 and 12, for your a and b, because the a and b are legs, and you'll find out that 5 squared plus 12 squared is equal to 13 squared. Now, you want to be aware that Pythagorean triples also come in multiples. So, the first one that we would talk about is going to be the 3, 4, 5. You could have a 3, 4, 5 multiplied by 2. What that would look like is what we've drawn in here for triangle XYZ, a 6, 8, 10. So if you didn't see the 10 here, if they had given you a problem that had just one leg with a value of 6 and the other leg having a value of 8, you would know automatically that the third value must be 10 because it's just a Pythagorean triple 3, 4, 5 multiplied by 2. If we multiply this guy by 2, you get 6, 8, 10. And the same thing for over here with the 5, 12, 13 on triangle TUV. The way we've drawn it out here is a 10, 24, 26. 10 just being 5 times 2. So this side here, the 12 is 12 times 2, and the 13 here is going to be 26 after it's multiplied by 2. So be aware of Pythagorean triples. In terms of a 3, 4, 5, you might see a 9, 12, 15. That's just a 3, 4, 5 multiplied by 2, or excuse me, 3. So just be aware that you'll see those. And you're going to see them oftentimes throughout this chapter in your textbooks. You'll see it in the future um, and later chapters. You're going to see it on the SAT, the ACT. If you remember your Pythagorean triples, it could really save you a lot of time. Now we're going to talk about Pythagorean inequalities. There are two main Pythagorean inequalities that you should know about. The first one we'll talk about is here on the lower left. What happens if c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared? Can you still have a right triangle? The answer is no. Whenever c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, your triangle is obtuse. So if this were the case for triangle XYZ, then we've got an obtuse triangle. And we could say that this were a, this were b, and this were c. Also, on the right here, we have c squared is less than a squared plus b squared. When that occurs, you're not dealing with a right triangle you're dealing with an acute triangle. So, if we made this side A and this side B of this triangle and this side C, if the segment YZ, if that length C were squared and it were less than the value of A squared plus B squared, you would know automatically that triangle XYZ is acute. You may not know what any of those angles are, x, y, or z, but you would know that they're all less than 90 because it's an acute triangle. So that's what you want to keep in mind when dealing with the Pythagorean theorem. You want to remember the Pythagorean theorem always. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. You want to remember the Pythagorean triples because those will save you a lot of time. And you also want to remember Pythagorean inequalities to help you determine whether or not a triangle is actually a right triangle, an acute triangle, or an obtuse triangle.